Yes, indeed. You are live on KXP at home. My name is Larry Mizell Jr. Very happy to be here with you. Very happy to be joined today by Oakland's Xavier DeFrepoles, a.k.a. better known to you and the world as Fantastic Negrito. How you hey. doing, bro? I'm doing great, uh, Larry. Um, thank you for uh, spending this time with me. You know, this is a very challenging time that we're all in. And um, I like to say that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm better than some and I'm not as good as others. And I practice gratitude. Every day. I know that's right. The title of your latest album, Have You Lost Your Mind Yet? Oh, yes. Um, I was curious. I feel like you titled that and made that before COVID hit. Well, you know, hey, man, at first in my heart, I'm a busker. Everybody, mm -hmm. or if they don't know, you know, my story was I was, I decided to get on the streets and just play six years ago and um, bypass all the um, people in power and their ivory white towers with their, you know, repressed fantasies of how they think we should fit into the world. I know mm -hmm. I didn't fit in. I'm an outsider. And, um, yeah, I, I, just, I, I just keep my finger on the pulse, so... You know, we've been sick for a very long time. <laughs> I know that's right. This ain't nothing new. So now what happened is this illness through COVID, through George Floyd, through all the, um, you know, social justice movements that are happening, our sickness has now just revealed itself. So whether I made it then or before, I, my finger is always on the pulse as an artist. And I, I'm kind of like a social commentary artist for now. I don't know what I'll be on my next album. It changes from time to time, and I wanted to write an album about, you know, the challenges of living in this, you know, society, this uh, so-called greatest country in the world, and what are the challenges of people around us, of me, of you, ordinary people, how are we maintaining our mental wellness and our mental health, and how, how is this, this uh, you know, this proliferation of uh, misinformation, as we call it, it how is it affecting us mentally every day, these images every day that we're pummeled with, these slogans that we're pummeled with every day, this machine that we face that tells us how, to, how we should think, what our political position should be, what our slogan should be, who we should scream that slogan at, and what our safe five positions should be that we don't offend people, you know. God forbid we offend people, you know, this... Very strange to me for uh, uh, terrain to navigate as an artist. So, yeah, I thought of all these things and wrote out, have you lost your mind yet? Yeah. And if you mm -hmm. did, if you did, that's okay. <laughs> then we got somewhere to go because I know I lost yeah. mine and um, I think it's okay to lose your mind and we can, it's, you, we don't have to live this tranquil, perfect existence. Like we live the full spectrum of life. We're happy, we're sad, we're up. We're down, we're depressed, we recover, we create. We, this gives us somewhere to go. We don't need to be um, you know, overly prescribed with medication and prescription pills every time we feel a certain way. Absolutely. And everything is prescribed, even the, the viewpoints and everything that are yeah. fed to us. <laughs> you know, prescribed is definitely the word. Yeah, yeah. Well, right yeah. on. Well, we're going to get into a song from Have You Lost Your Mind Yet? and one other and come back and talk in just a second. Right here, Fantastic Negrito. What's up, y'all? Fantastic Negrito in the building, Oakland, California. And I'm so happy, now. I'm so happy to cry, love. Yeah, I'm so happy not to cry. You know, every day, feel so glad to be alive. Oh, and I'm so happy I cry. I'm so happy, love. I'm so happy I cry. I'm so happy I cry. Today you know you know today I'm glad to be alive. Ooh, I'm so happy I cry. Back in 1999, told everything that I could find. Used to scratch and snip on life, searching for that friend of mine. Caught the devil in disguise, still the pissed during her pie. All them things that made me hard, now make me sit and wonder why. Never gave up, never gave up. Never gave up Never gave up Never gave up Never gave up I'm so happy, Lord, no Happy I cry Lord, I'm so happy I cry Cause today, you know So glad to be alive 
Lord, I'm so happy I cry. I'm so happy, Lord, I'm so happy I cry. Lord, I'm so happy I cry. You know the day, the day I'm so glad to be alive. Lord, I'm so happy I cry. Now I got a million dollar rings. It's King King to Jack of Spades. I'm ungrateful, I can't lie. I can't sleep at night, I cry. I'm deep into the hole, sliding down the stripper's pole. I'm glad mama's still alive. If I could reach her, I would cry. I never gave up. 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 I'm so happy, Lord. So happy I cry. Lord, I'm so happy I cry. Cause today, you know, so glad to be alive. Oh, I'm so happy I cry. And I'm so happy. I'm so happy I cry. Lord, I'm so happy I cry. You know the day, oh, so glad to be alive. Lord, I'm so happy I cry. Baby, wake up to you another morning sun. We wake up to another morning sun Today we wake up Today we wake up to Make me sing I'm happy this morning 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 I'm happy this morning, I'm happy this morning, I'm happy this morning. Oh, I'm so happy I cry. Yes, I'm so happy I cry. And I hope you are too. So we're going to do another song. we do some older, some off the first EP that makes me feel so good. Night it turned to day, Lord. Night it turned to day. Night it turned to day, Lord. Night it turned to day. Night it turned to day. Night it turned to day, Lord. Night it turned to day. Walking in the darkness. Not yet seeing the light Slipping all the bad ones And I thought I won the fight The big of my delusion I've loved money, whores and cars Now I'm walking in the sunlight Broken better, better, better bruises and scars Night it turned to day Oh, night it turned to day You can sing it Night it turned to day That moment in night it turned to day Night it turned to day, night it turned to day, night it turned to day, and night it turned to day. Middle of the conflict, law, me, myself, and lies. Watch people die for nothing, law. So go to hungry eyes when I swam deep in the river. Lord, I didn't find no self reflection, new direction. To a healthy state of mind, I thought I'd never find. I clap my hands and I said, Not it turned to day, not it turned to day, not it turned to day, Lord, Mama did not it turn to day, not it turned to day, not it turned to day, not it turned to day, Lord, Mama did not it turn to day. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I'm not going back to no work plantation. That captured all the dreams and the happiness. Go find the house ground to stand on. Two eyes and a love child. Ooh, yeah. Oh, no. Night it turned a day. Night it turned a day. 
Night eternity dinner, number ten, night eternity day. Night eternity day, oh night eternity day. Night eternity day, long number ten, night eternity day. And you know that's right. What kind of, what kind of drugs am I on? <laughs> you high on yourself right now you just saw an amazing performance just like i did from fantastic negrito so happy i could i cry off yeah. your latest album uh have you lost your mind yet yeah and i usually i do that with tank from tank and the bangers but you know couldn't i couldn't hook that one up because she's in new orleans <laughs> for sure i mean yeah. i love just the the intimacy of just hearing you do that oh, yeah. with That's the acoustic my bathroom. That's right. right in my bathroom, yeah. Uh-huh. I felt that that immediacy, like I'm right there. And, right on. Um, I thought it was it was really interesting, too, just the fact that two Tiny Desk winners collaborated, and that's the first time that's ever happened. History. Yeah. Yeah, when I hit Tank Up, I'm like, look, we got to make history. I don't want nobody to beat us. You know, uh, mm -hmm. pe people think I'm too self-absorbed here. Let me bring you in here. And then uh, I sent her a few things, and then when I wrote that one, she was like, oh, yeah, like that, I could do that. And so, I mean, she was just fire. She's just, to me, like one of the best artists in the last 20 years. Sorry, that's just my opinion. I just think she's, like, she's magic. She's sensational, man. Her voice, her ability as an mm -hmm. MC, as a singer, just who can touch that? I, I don't think anybody can really touch that. And so I was really happy to um, have her, have her. And join her. I just did some work with her the other day, too. She's outstanding. Nice. Wow. You guys doing some more work together? Yeah, we continue. Like, we do um, little podcast performances. Like, I'll film my mm. part. She'll film, her, film hers, and then we get them together. And I, I, it's embarrassing because I'm just, I'm a fan. It's like, right. I gush all over her. I feel like she's, she's right just on. the best. How are you managing um, collaborating and just living in this kind of post-COVID Hey, well, man, as I was saying, man, you know, hey, for black folks, this ain't nothing new. Right. You know, we've been struggling. We've been going through stuff. We've been burying our, our kids, burying our brothers. Man, I buried my brother when he was 14. I buried my cousin when he was 16. I buried my best friend when he was 19, you know, killed in the barber shop. We, I, I'm down here in West Oakland. It's where my studio is. I mean, there's always, we come from a legacy of struggle and obstacles, and what we learn during that is that that's what makes us powerful. That's where you get this music from. That's why I call my music Black Roots music. You know, it's it's funk, it's rock, it's punk, it's rhythm, it's blues, it's alligator shoes, cornbread, and <laughs> attitude. You know, Come on now. It, you know what I mean. And so it's right. like I feel it's like you know I lost my hand. I can I can barely play an instrument. I lost my hand in an accident. You know, this hand, I can't move this hand. I be now, I can't barely play an instrument, but it's an it's an obstacle, and I'm like these obstacles. Hey, you take that bullshit, turn it into good shit. You know that's that's how it is. I mean, we gotta um, they're gonna come, and they're gonna test us, and the test is what do you got? What do you got to live on this planet? What do you have to contribute? And I think when we're contributing, we become much more powerful because we can help others. And we can live for others. And really, that's the key to living. I found that out late in life. I'm like, oh, it's not just about me. Because, you know, I'm a recovering narcissist, you know. A lot of my musician friends are recovering from drugs. And I'm, reco I'm recovering from narcissism. So, so um, for me, these obstacles are an opportunity. Opportunity to coexist. Opportunity to collaborate. To reinvent something. To go do that project that you are. I'm, I'm doing like three albums right now. So I mm. think it's... You know, it, it's hard. It's difficult. And I woke up and 80% of my income was gone. Mm. So I had to figure it out. No touring. And so guess what? We figured it out. Like our grandparents did. And our great-grandparents did. And all the people that came before us. Right. I call that original ingenuity. There you go. I, uh, I sign off on that. Or like my big bro says, survival with style. There you go. You know? Yeah, here Right you. on. And uh, the song after that you did, Night Turning to Day, that was like your breakout song. 
Yeah, in a way, it was the first time. Oh, you, you're you're like the Europeans. You actually you, you read. Okay, I get it. <laughs> I thought I thought I pay a little attention, bro. It's 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 true. I thought only they did that in Europe. They know everything. So you took your first step when you were three. <laughs> like them. Yeah, I mean, that was the song that I wrote. I was working with my boy, Malcolm Spellman. Shout out to Malcolm Spellman. You know, we were growing weed together. I quit. I would retired, man. I sold all my instruments. I never wanted to play music again. The music machine had beat me. It had defeated me. It, had, it was like a standard eight count where they grab your gloves. You want to continue? I was like, nope. I don't want to continue. And, you know, trying to live in in someone else's shadow, trying to be something, this big machine is telling you, you should be like this. You should sound like this. You should look like this. This is how I can sell you. This is how I can sell you. This is how I can sell you. What? Yeah, this is how you can sell me? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Right. So I quit, walked away, started growing weed, lived on a farm. My boy Malcolm Spellman was like, I still want to write, man. I was like, listen, you can write. I'll grow the weed. And I just, I'm going to give you half the money because I love you. You're my friend. And somebody got to keep being creative. So I did that for three years. People looking at me like, damn, you giving up all your money. I'm like, I love this dude. I'm living for other people. One day he calls me up. Yo, man, I, I don't need money anymore. I'm like, what? I don't need money. I'm like, well, what happened? He goes, hey, I got this show. He says, it doesn't look like it's going to be much. I'm like, what's it called? He says, it's called Empire. I'm like, hmm? doesn't sound like much. <laughs> it's a true story. Now, I read that. I read about yeah. this. Yeah. And, then, and then he was like, about a year later, I'm still growing weed at an art gallery. I'm happy. I'm like, maybe I'm going to be a polygamist or something. I'm gonna, something's going to go down. I'm about to live a, I'm trying to live my life, you know? Okay. So I, I, fa- I failed at that, obviously. And I, <laughs> I tried. Um, <laughs> um, you know, hey, let your freak flag fly. Be yourself. Right. You know, you mm-hmm. don't, don't judge me. I won't judge you. Mm-hmm. And you want me to let you live the way you want to live? I'm going to let you. Right. But, th- but don't trip on me. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so um, what happened then is that he's like, man, start doing music. I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm middle-aged. It's, I'm over. Middle-aged people, who cares about us? He's like, man, just do what you love. And so one day I wrote, now it is turn to day. And I'm like, that's what I like. And he's like, man, that's... No, he's from the hood. You know, he's yeah. like, he's like, man, that's just different, bro. There ain't no drums. I'm like... That's what I like. He's like, you know what? You supported me. I'm supporting you. And so I was, we were like, where should we go? Nobody wants to hear this shit. People was like, man, that's, is that country music? Like, I don't, shouldn't you be doing like Neo Soul? I'm like, bro, you mm-hmm. look, read first, learn your history. I'm listening to Robert Johnson, Skip James, Charlie Patton, Lead Belly. They originated this music, bro. You know, I'm telling, so I just said, you know what? I'll just go on the streets and play. I'll let people decide. And I did that for about a year, and I never looked back. I let people decide. I stopped letting corporations decide. That's amazing that that you came to this point of kind of reclaiming this musical legacy. Absolutely. Uh, created by, you know, blues oh, yeah. people. Absolutely. And, uh, I'm just curious because... Reading up on you, you're somebody who grew up in a strict upbringing to a certain point. Oh, yeah. And uh, sounds like you got turned out by Prince, P-Funk, you know what I mean? And uh, got into the industry, self-taught everything. And uh, For better or for worse. No. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> but definitely for better, you know, because yeah, yeah, yeah. this, this is you. It's hey, all you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, but when you're talking about kind of, cause you had so many different phases. Oh yeah. Um, you had, uh, the, the Xavier project, at least there was one. Yeah, there was one. Right, maybe there was more. There's one. Uh, okay. You were in kind of like, uh, like a funk, punk, bad brains, fishbone kind of situation. What was that called? Hey, man, as uh, Little Richard said, I'm the originator, you know? See, hey, there you go. Hey, um, you know, I got into that, you know, the scene was called Afro Punk. Yeah. It used, it used to be 10 people at those shows. Yeah. In the basements of uh, uh, upper, upper East Side in New York, in South Central L.A., in London, man, it was called Afro Punk. And you're and talking used, about when it was punk, punk. I'm talking about, yeah, I'm just talking yeah. about, yeah, when it was edgy, when it was... Yeah. When it was edgy, you right. know what I mean? When it was, 
And it's okay. Things have to evolve. Sure. I'm saying edgy, meaning there was 100 people in the basement. Right. That was the Afropunk Festival. Mm-hmm. And I was so happy and so proud and honored that that existed. And there was a home for that sound mm-hmm. that I had. It, it was amazing as a person of color, you know, to uh, find that tribe, the Afropunk tribe. Mm-hmm. And I, I was so happy to be a part of it then and now. And um, it has truly evolved. Mm-hmm. Like, all things should evolve. We should yes. all evolve. Man, if you're still doing the same thing you was doing at 17, partner, you tripping. You know, it's right. like... Time to update so, that iOS. Yeah, 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 exactly. So that's the thing that was beautiful. Yeah, I went through that, and I loved it. And all those things that, you know, you go through, they're a part of what, who you are now. Yeah. So that's, that's what I'm wondering. At, at what point did you get into the blues? Well, I want to say this. I was always into the blues like okay. everybody else is, but they just don't know it. Right, 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 right. You know, my, grandma, my grandmother, they're from rural Virginia. You know, they, she was like, honey, she's like, white people thought we were sad. We wasn't sad. I was like, damn. Hey, that stayed in my head because I was so young when she said that. She's like, great grandma, uh, Ella Wheeler, and we were playing, she was playing the Negro spirituals on that organ. You know, your mama was just sitting there on the floor. She's like, we wasn't sad. It's like white folks thought we were sad. We was not sad. And so that gave me the strength and the power and the openness to not feel shame because this society, especially for us, makes us feel ashamed about a lot of things oh, that definitely. we have no business. We have no right to feel ashamed about it. If we claim it, it'll empower us and feed us. All I did was honor my ancestors, and they started feeding me. I honored that music, and it was like, here, here's some money. Here's a lot of money. I'm just, I, there's nothing fantastic about me. Nothing. When I said fantastic Negrito, I meant I come from a tradition of survivors. I come from a tradition, a legacy, a culture of people that, in order to survive, being treated worse than cattle. Worse than dogs, worse than pigs, we had to be resilient, resilient, and we had to find a means of expression. And we had to find it, and we had to hold on to it, that expression for dear life, so that you and I can sit here. And once I <clears throat> embraced that, man, it, it took care of me. And, you know, all praises to that, man. Um, so when I say that, I'm still discovering it. Mm-hmm. I call it Black Roots music. That's what I call it. I think I'm the first person to call it that. When I see the hashtag, it's just me. Right. I mean, it's just powerful medicine. It's just therapeutic. And the whole world enjoys our Black Roots music. Mm-hmm. The whole world. I, I played on six continents last year. Mm-hmm. I remember meeting people like Robert Plant in England and just talking to him. And he was like, you know, for us, it was about Johnny Guitar Watson. And I was like, really? Okay. Mm-hmm. I love that, that this music that came from our ancestors is, is royalty, brother. It's, right. it's like we come from royalty, but we don't know it. Mm-hmm. And we keep discovering it. So people are like, oh, how'd you get into the blues? Hey, I don't, I'm just into it, and I'm just discovering everything. <clears throat> I'm sure some blues purists be like, hey, and purists, watch that word, because that's, <sighs> brother, that's. <clears throat> I don't mess with that. It's a whole nother trip yeah. of people like having some image and some idea of how you should be based on their own repressed fantasy. It's bizarre. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, I come from this. This is in my blood. Right. I come from it. You listen to my son that listen to trap music. I'm like, oh, that's the blues. Right. Oh, you, oh, you, oh, you messed up. Oh, okay. Oh, you, okay. Lean. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, that's like one of the things. You know who the rapper Earl Sweatshirt is? Yes. Okay, so Earl's dad is, um, he's a famous, I think, South African poet. Right. And I guess they were kind of estranged, but there is a quote I read in the interview a few years ago. It's just one of the illest things I ever read that kind of speaks to what you're saying here. And he said, they were asking him, you know, do you listen to your son's music? And he said, I don't really listen to, I can't really listen to a lot of rap. It just, it's, I just hear the sound of uh, our children saying they're hurt. Oh, yeah. And I was like, wow. Okay, well, you really get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
Yes, man. Amen. Yeah. Yes, yes. And right. so we keep living this thing. I don't know, like to me, people are like, you don't play 12 bar blues. Like, I'm like, man, that's your repressed fantasy, bro. Like yeah, you said, these, I'm not tripping off you because you're tripping off some image of yes. some person broken down in a shack. Right. And for some reason that makes you feel kind of a certain way. You know, nah, I don't, I don't live, and I don't think anybody should. Right. I don't think anybody should live, you know, with someone else's idea of what, what they are. That's misery. That's depression. Be you. Find you and express you. Find yourself, like the meter said. Yep. You know, <clears throat> I think that's so ill. Uh, you're, you're talking about people that within the blues form, within all forms, you know, who kind of trace authenticity. This is something that I always kind of I've I've had trouble connecting to blues in the past when I've been in blues bars, blues venue situations. It just seems like a reenactment society, like Civil War reenactment society or something. I'm like, this ain't real. This isn't what it is. Right. This looks like no, Blues yeah. Brothers 2000, you know? You know, you're right about that. And, you know, we have to just take our gifts and be who we are. And, man, I feel the power of all those people, nameless people, mm -hmm. talented people that never got a chance to even be a human being. Yes. I feel them... Holding me up. Right on. And, and, and that's all I need. That's right. Yeah, that's right all on. I need. We're right here with Fantastic Negrito, right here on KEXP. We're going to get into a couple more songs right now. Okay. Okay, right here on KEXP. We're going to do another song. It's off the new album. It's called How Long. Like how long can we keep holding on to hate? Tell me how long. Tell me how long Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me how long Tell me how long Can we keep on holding on Tell me baby, Al Capone Out there screaming all alone Full of shit, full of hope, holding on. We can repeat the same old lies till they make us feel alright. Try to escape, we gotta fight all the scary ones, all the scary ones. When you're standing all alone where the wild things roam with a loud mouth. So fast, spitting out hashtags. There's a lynch mob ready to kill you. What have we become? Oh, what have we become? Tell me how long. Tell me how long. Tell me, keep on holding on. Tell me how long. Tell me how long Can we keep on holding on He wear a pistol, ready to blast Zero to hero, you must think fast He wanna be right He wanna fight all the scary ones So deep in a hole that I cannot breathe on It's so far away from me Jimmy's a freak he needs peace, he's holding on When standing all alone with the wild things room With a loud mouth, king of the hill Pushing, moving so fast, spitting out hashtags There's a lynch mob ready to kill you What have we become? Oh, what have we become? So I long Tell me how long Can we keep on holding on Tell me how long Oh, tell me how long Can we keep on holding on oh, oh, oh. At the end of this thing, let me listen La, la, 
Black girl, that girl don't lie to me. Tell me where did you sleep last night? Any pines, any pines where the sun don't shine. Well, I shiver the whole night through. Black girl, black girl, where will you go? To the place where the cold winds blow. In the pines, in the pines, where the sun don't shine. Well, I shiver the whole night through. Sound like this, eh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, black girl, black girl, your man is gone. Now you travel the road alone. And you raise that child all by yourself Then the policeman shot him down Oh, black girl, black girl Where will you go? Oh, to the place where the cold winds blow In the pines, in the pines Where the sun don't shine Where I shiver the whole night through like this. Mm Yes, indeed. So, you were you were already in the industry when Nirvana covered that on the right. live album, right? At the time, did you connect with that? Well, um, you know, I had known the you know my 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 relatives are really old okay. on my mother's side. I mean, when I used to visit them in the eighties in Virginia, I had an uncle with one arm, hmm. and he used to drink. Johnny Walker Red and grape juice every day. Make his own breakfast with one arm. We called him Uncle Horace Brown. He used to have all this music, and he called it country music. Hmm. So I was very familiar with, with that music before Nirvana did it, and um, it was good. You know, it was good. I, I liked, uh, I loved their other stuff better. That I connected more with, um, you know, yeah. their first album. But yeah. yeah, that was cool. I thought it was cool. He did his yeah. version of it, but... You know, I was like, man, Lead Belly. That it's was Lead Belly. that was the ver that was the version. But at the same time, I really, 
Man, just speaking of that group, I think, man, there really hasn't been another American group like Nirvana group that kind of in a strange way, people, someone asked me, name some of my top blues albums, and I said, um, their album, uh, Nevermind, is one mm. of them. People are like, are you crazy? I was like, because, man, there's so much honesty and rawness and feeling yeah. in that record. And, man. Well, it touched you know, so many people. Yeah, we don't really get that. Yeah, that's real. And so, yeah, that's my, I just want to speak on that band, but their cover well, was cool. You yeah. know, it was cool, but, you know, I love their other stuff. I was just curious, because that was like my entry point to Lead Belly. Oh, really? But that's yeah. good. It's good that that's, people do covers. Right, right. right. It's because of education, though, yeah. Right, right on. And before that cover of Lead Belly's In the Pines, you did how long Yes. from Have You Lost Your Mind Yet? Yeah, I wanted to mix it up. Yeah. A little bit of the new, some of the old, just like, you know. And let's see. In the Pines, that was on Last Days of Oakland. Of Oakland, Oakland the Last Days of Oakland. And, I, I, and some people got pissed because, like you were saying, you're in that bar and you feel a certain way like, what? Yeah. And I love the song, but I was like, man, you know, I got to write these. Why, how does that song feel to me now? And so I, you know, I changed a lot of the lyrics because... When I was trying to write it, I was trying to honor the strongest people that I'd known. And Where Did You Sleep Last Night was like the state of mind of people like my mother. And a lot of single mothers out there that had to bury their own children. Mm. And so I wrote from that perspective. I was like, this is how I see this song now. And, um, you know, they were writing it, writing it from a perspective of 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. So people were like, oh, man, how could you do that? And, but I could do it because... Um, it's very necessary, that's and right. I have the ball, and I have the balls to do it, you know. And so that's how I could do it. But yeah, I was that song was strictly like honoring mothers who had to bury their children. These women held society together, man. Come on, I mean, I remember my brother was killed. I remember like just looking at my mother's face, and I was like a, a, a sadness I I have not ever seen before. And the thing is, she still had to take care of us. Yeah. Food still had to be made. She still had to deal with my badass, you know? Mm -hmm. It was amazing the strength and power of these women that raised us, sometimes without men around. And they held the fabric of society together, and they still do. These strong um, black women, and that's what I wanted to honor in, in, in the pines. I didn't care what anybody said, and that's how, how I did it. To and me, that's, that's in keeping with the uh, blues canon and tradition because they, yes. oh, they cover songs. These songs are old then. And, uh, you know, they're making it their own. Exactly. All the time. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Right on. I really appreciate uh, the direction you took it. Thank you. you thank know? you. Because I remember even when I was introduced to that song, I was like, this is like a kind of a, this is, this is like kind of a, a, a scary, creepy song. Like right, Like right. was saying to his girl, like, you know, he's, he's in some jealous rage right now stealing right. all night type thing murder yeah but you know but, yeah, I'm, yeah yeah I'm, I'm into healing right. I'm like when I write a song I'm like how can I I like healing meeting up in the back alley like this with accountability mm. that is powerful man healing and accountability man I want my life that's what my life is every song I write I write for my kids I'm not talking to nobody but my little kids that's it the messages I have in the song that's who I'm talking to that's why I started playing on the streets. I'm like, who can I talk to? My kid maybe needs to hear this song. And, and um, so I could be really, uh, it could be children's music. <laughs> yeah, like even the song. Led like Belly I, made uh, albums for kids. Yeah. And, and it could be even like the song like How Long. Yeah, that's all about accountability. Yeah. You know, and it's all about, you know, George Floyd. It's all about not even George Floyd. It's about the cop that killed George Floyd. I, I want to talk to him. I'm trying to ask him, hey, you're part of this society, this country, man. How did you get here? Like, what, yeah. what happened the day before mm. you decided to become this person? So, yeah, I, I, love, to, I love to, you know, I, I don't want to be safe. I don't want to be politically correct. If you're uncomfortable, hell, I'm probably doing my job. And, I, and I, I appreciate that because I never wanted to be an artist and get to wear this amazing clothing to, uh, you know, to make people feel comfortable. Yeah. If I wanted to do that, I would work at Starbucks. Hello? Right. No offense to anybody that works at Starbucks, but I would have chose a different career. Right. I'm not for all this censorship and 
you said this and now we feel bad and now you're, you know, we're going to cancel you. Hey, some people need to be canceled, but hey, I'm going to speak. I'm going to speak the realest and I'm going to speak the truth. And I haven't lived my life to become a 52-year-old man and had the courage to wear this shirt and be silenced. It ain't going to happen. Right. <laughs> it ain't going to happen, yeah. Right. Speak like how people talk to each other and have always talked to each other. Yeah. We don't, we don't talk like robots and algorithms. No. Even if they're trying to make us talk like that. It's dangerous. Well, it's very yeah, dangerous. It is, it is very dangerous, for sure. Absolutely. Well, it's lies. I, I really appreciate the, the intention and the questions that you put into your music. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I wonder if you'd speak a little bit on this last song we're about to run, An Honest Man. Honest Man, that's a trippy song, man. You know, um, Patrice O'Neill. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you're into Patrice O'Neill. R.I.P.? Yeah, I mean, I... I um, he helped me write that song. Wow. I really, really, yeah, I don't know if people know that, but yeah. I just love uh, his honesty and I loved his rawness. I loved his approach. A legend. Yeah, he's a legend. And um, I remember writing that song. That was like my first song. Like I kind of break through before Tiny Desk. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just a, a fun, interesting, provocative, great story to tell, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I, I loved writing it and it has a special place in my heart. Right on. Thank you for sharing that. We're going to get into an honest man from, from Fantastic Negrito right here on KEXP. I'm going to do this next song. It's the first song that put me on the map. It's called An Honest Man Before a Tiny Desk. Mm -hmm. I'm in love again But no, this time it's not with my hand Wondering, murdering Every time that I get the chance I'm a human, don't you know? But remember first that I'm a man She painted pictures for me That I refuse to understand Cause I want everything you got, baby For absolutely no reason Yesterday it felt so good The other day it felt so bad The streets thought I got me wandering Looking for my fix again Should've paid the Chinese girl Now I'm losing everything I ever had Yesterday it felt so good The other day it felt so bad <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
Fantastic Negrito right here on KXP and Honest Man. Thank you for putting that pen to paper, putting that hand to guitar and sharing that with us today. Well, thank you so much for having me, man. It's been like talking to a friend. I appreciate you. All day. Thanks for being here. Is there anything else you want to tell the people worldwide? Uh, hey, man, I just want to tell the people that, you know, hey, we're going to get through this. It may seem rough, but all the obstacles that we are challenged with, these are the things that make us stronger as people, as a community, as family members. So we're going to get through it and we're going to see you soon with a lot of new music that may mm -hmm. shock you and may Don't disappoint care. you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, couldn't expect nothing less. Got to yes. buck the trend. Right yes, on. Sir. Thank you so much, brother. Peace, man. We'll, we'll uh, talk with y'all soon. Later. Okay. All right. Peace. All Fantastic right. Negrito. It's been live right here at home oh. on KEXP. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.